Hello everyone! Welcome to Facebook Live. Thank you so much for being here today on Facebook watching this. We are going to talk about a topic that a lot of people ask me questions about. It's a topic that when I was thinking of writing a book, I didn't really know where to start or what to do and it's something that I wish I had people help me with when I wanted to write a book many, many years ago. Writing a book is something that a lot of people commonly want to do. It's a very appealing thing because we all have so many stories inside of our head. Maybe some of those are fictional stories and maybe it's just the story of our life, but the idea of wanting to write a book is something that's super popular and that a lot of people crave. So I'm putting together this Facebook Live that you can watch right now or you can watch later on whenever you're ready to write a book so that you can get started and that you don't have any excuses not to do it. That's super, super important. I want to make sure that, you know, we're not getting any younger. So when you have that feeling like you want to do something, you have to go ahead and you have to jump right in and do it. As we're doing this Facebook Live today, feel free to leave comments. Um, as you leave comments, I'll try to see them, I'll try to answer them. If I miss any of the comments, when this is over, I'll go back through and I'll answer the comments in the group so that the answers live there forever. And of course, if you need me after this, um, you could find me at Jen Glance on social media and of course at my website, jenglance.com. So keep the questions coming and keep them flying. But let's just jump right in. So the very first thing to talk about when you want to write a book is, of course, the idea for the book. How much have you thought this through? So a lot of you might be coming here tonight with an idea of a book you want to write. And some of you might be coming tonight just thinking, hey, I know I want to write a book. Before you decide, Am I going to get this book published? Should I get the book published by a traditional publisher or self-published? I want you to first really, really, really think about your idea. What is it that you want to write about? Have you written an outline of this topic? So oftentimes you'll have this story in your head. You'll think, okay, I want to write a book about this girl who lives in New York City and has this weird, crazy job, but I don't really know where it's going to go, but I just know it's a good idea. Before you commit to doing too much, the very first thing I would say is write down an outline. This outline doesn't have to be super complicated, doesn't have to be a very long outline, but sit there and write down perhaps how the story is going to flow. Maybe you want to write down the different chapters and what's going to be inside of the chapters. You don't have to have the ending all decided yet. But having a good understanding of the outline of the book is an amazing, amazing, amazing first step to take. After you've written an outline, I would say jump in and write the very first chapter. Now this is going to be the hardest part because going from idea to actually writing is a huge, huge step. You're going to feel so much pressure when you're looking at the sheet of paper trying to figure out where to start, what to write first. So getting down to business and writing the first chapter will be a huge advantage for you to get some clarity over exactly how this book is going to go, what's your voice going to be, and how it's really going to flow. Before you get too far into the book writing process, the next thing I'll ask you to do is check and see if there's anything similar that exists out there. Are there other types of books just like this? Is there a plot line that's similar? Do a little bit of research that you know what's out there before you write an entire book just to realize there's other books out there that are practically identical to your topic. Don't get discouraged if you notice there are other books that are very similar to your topic. That's okay. Of course, there can be books about a lot of different kinds of things, but if there's a book that's identical, you might want to change things up. You might want to change the setting of the book or the characters, things like that, so that you are able to make sure that your book is super, super unique and that everybody can read your book and have a very one-of-a-kind experience. That's going to be the whole process of the idea, of really getting that down pat. The second section that I want to talk to you about might be a little tough to hear, but it's the truth. Are you excited to write the book? <laughs> Writing a book takes a whole lot of work. It's a process. It can take you months. It can take you years. It can take you half of your life. Is writing something that you love to do, you enjoy to do? Are you writing often? Writing, a lot of people will tell you, 
It's just like a muscle. You have to exercise it. You have to use it because it has to be something that you're constantly getting better at. So if you haven't written in a while, one of the things you should do is make sure that you um, you start to write more often, that you're writing every single day, that you're writing every single week, that you're spending more time actually writing to see if it's something that you like to do. Is the book the best medium for you to tell your story? So back in the day, books were very attractive to people. They helped build brands if you were an entrepreneur. They helped really tell a story. But if you don't love to write, perhaps a book isn't the best medium for you to go into for you to tell your story. And the final question under the truth section is, why are you doing this? Why do you want to write this book? Are you looking to write a book that you sell millions of copies and make millions of dollars? If that's the case, I would say don't have that as your primary reason. Not to say you can't write the next Twilight or Harry Potter, but books don't generally make people a lot of money. Books are something that people will do because it's a passion. You might have to write six books before anyone knows who you are and buys any of them. So writing is more about the long term rather than thinking you're going to write a book and have it see it on the movie screen and make millions and millions of dollars. Do you want to write a book because you think you have a crazy life story? While that might be completely true, will it make a good book? Is it something relatable, something that people will want to read? You're going to want to ask yourself those questions. Let's talk a little bit about the different genres and how they're a little bit different when it comes to selling a book. For example, if you choose to write a nonfiction book, it's a little bit different than writing a fiction book. For a nonfiction book, what you need to do is have an idea. Then you need to outline that idea. After you've outlined how the book's going to go, you would write a book proposal. And a book proposal is a giant document that explains to an agent and a publisher exactly how your book is going to be, how it's going to go. After you have that book proposal, you would then pitch it to an agent who would then pitch it to a publisher. So your agent's sort of like your middle person who's going to take your idea, take your book, and then shop it around to different publishers to try to get it published for you. On the flip side, in fiction, if you want to write a fiction book, the process is a little bit different. For fiction, you need to have an idea that you then outline, that you then write. So for fiction, you have to write the entire book or at least 75% of the book before then giving it to an agent and then getting it published. So for fiction, you're doing a lot more of the work up front and nonfiction, you're doing more of the planning up front. The next thing I'm going to tell you is that never, ever, ever pay an agent. So agents are people who work on for free and they get a percentage of with, when your book sells. So you work with an agent and they help you reshape your book, they help you with your book proposal, and then what you do is once the book sells, they get about a percentage of the sale of the book. So you don't pay an agent up front. Don't expect a ton of money either up front for publishing. I remember the first agent I had sat me down and he said, you know, we'll try to sell your book. And I was like, yeah, selling a book, going to make a lot of money. And he was like, well, it's not quit your job money. It's not enough money that's going to make you, um, you know, not work for a year. It's maybe a little bit of money that while you're writing on the weekends or you're writing after work would be what you would get for writing if you had a part-time job during those hours. So don't expect to get a ton of money up front, but you might get a lot of money over the years as your book sells on royalties. Don't rule out self-publishing. I'll tell you a personal tale of mine. Um, the very first book I wrote was called All of My Friends Are Engaged. It's right here. Um, that book I wrote and I sort of self-published it. I published it through an online publisher called Thought Catalog. They used to be a very popular website that a lot of people read back in the day. They started a book division and they published All My Friends Are Engaged. It first was published as an ebook, and basically what they did is I wrote the book, I gave them the book, they designed the cover, um, put it up on Amazon for me, and then took like 40% of the sales of the money. So it was beneficial because it, they, they did the process for you, um, but they took far too much money for really what they did. They didn't do much. All they did was get the book on Amazon, which is very, very easy to do. They don't market it for you. They don't help you do PR, nothing. I worked my butt off to get this book out there to the world, to do my own PR, to market it, and was only getting like 60% of the money coming in. And that was sort of a little bit of an annoying process, but 
Self-publishing is surprisingly easy. You can write your whole book, put it on CreateSpace, get it up on Amazon, and then make all of the money yourself. You only give a little bit of Amazon for hosting your book on there. Um, you can create print books on Amazon as well. So you can really go far with self-publishing, especially if you have an existing audience. If you have a huge email list, if you have a lot of social media followers, if you're excellent at digital marketing, you can sell your own book and not have to go through traditional publishing. A lot of people think traditional publishing is so attractive. They do everything for you. And we'll get to that side of the game. But self-publishing has so many advantages. First, you have total control, so you can choose what your cover looks like. You can also figure out how you want to market your book, the name of the book, when you want the book to be released. If you go through a traditional publisher, you might write a book in 2018, and it won't even hit shelves until 2020. So with traditional publishing, it's a little bit of a longer process. With self-publishing, I can write a book in July of 2018 and have it be live on Amazon in November 2018. So there's a lot of benefits to having that happen. I've also done the route of pitching to traditional publishers, and that's when I published the book Always a Bridesmaid for Hire that was re-released in paperback to be called When You Least Expect It. I know it's a little bit confusing, but these are exactly the same book. They just have a different cover and a different name. That's a whole other long story, but I'll talk a little bit about this process. For this book, I went through a traditional publisher, and what that meant was um, I wrote the book, the agent sold it to Simon & Schuster, and Simon & Schuster published it. Well, we think when we go with traditional publishers, it's um, a really amazing experience. They do so much for you. I think it's important to be very clear about what exactly they do. Um, what they really do for you is print the book. Um, maybe they'll get it in some bookstores, but that's not their job. What they do is they go to sale, they have um, sales reps come to them from all different bookstores, so Barnes & Noble, independent bookstores, and they showcase all the books they're publishing that year, and the sales rep buy them based on what they think will sell. So Barnes & Noble will be like, okay, I think like 100 copies of this book will sell throughout all of our stores. We'll buy 100 copies, we'll just sell it online, and that's that. You think like if Barnes & Noble buys copies of your book, it'll be on the first floor of Barnes & Noble when people walk in. That's not true. People, publishers pay for books to be in locations. We've all heard of product placement. So when you walk into Barnes & Noble and you see new releases or hot new books, publishers have paid for those books to be there. So if the publisher isn't spending a lot of money to market your book, there's a good chance that your book might not be on those tables. You also might think that with a traditional publisher, you're going to get a lot of PR help. That's not the case at, at all. You get um, a pu you get someone who does publicity for you, but they're working on like 30 other books. And usually what they do is they mail your book out to a bunch of editors. They send out a press release. They do all these things from like the 1980s. Nobody responds. Maybe you get like two press clips. That's it. You have to do all of your own work. It's very important to remember that as an author, you're also the person who's going to market it. You're also the person who's going to do their own PR for it. If you write a book, you're also going to have to make it sell. Traditional publisher, self-publisher, they don't do that for you. The days of doing traditional publishing thinking that they're going to get you a lot of money and they're going to market the book for you are not true at all. So not to shatter your dreams of trying to get a traditional publisher, but letting you know that there's not that many advantages of going the traditional route. If you really want to write something and you really want it to go out soon and you want control over it and you want to make all of the money, self-publishing has a ton of amazing benefits that you might want to be interested in and that you might want to try. So I wouldn't rule out self-publishing at all. Um, if anything, I would say Focus more on your idea, more so than what's going to happen with your idea. Meaning, a lot of times people um, are worried about whether or not they should write a book because they don't know if anyone's going to buy it. Instead of doing that, worry more about writing the book. So, I want to take questions. Um, I just got into where I can see your comments. So. Feel free to write some questions in the question box. We'll hang on for a couple more minutes to answer any of the questions that you have. Um, yay, Georgie wrote that she's currently writing her book and she's super excited for it. I'm so happy to hear that, Georgie. Keep pushing forward. 
it can be really hard, the book writing process. It's super lonely. You do it by yourself. You're isolated. Um, sometimes it's good to be in a writing group where you can share your work. Other times it's good just to go really hard forward with yourself and write as much as you can um, before really sharing it with anybody else. Do we have any book questions at all that I could help you answer on this Facebook Live? Gonna hang out for another minute. Thanks for taking. Oh, I think it's delayed. Um, thank you so much for spending time here tonight. Um, this Facebook Live will live on this page for, for a while. So if you find that you have other questions, just comment them in the comment section. We can go back and forth. Oh, we got a question. Any suggested self-publishing platforms? CreateSpace is the most popular one that a lot of people use through Amazon where um, you just write it up and you publish it through CreateSpace. So that's one of the biggest ones. Um, that's good because it's tied directly to Amazon, which means that's probably where you're going to host your book for sale. You can self-publish your book and design it on your own platform and host it on your own platform and make it just an ebook and send it to people like that and not even go through Amazon. A benefit of going through Amazon is that you can do search terms on Amazon that help your book pop up a lot more. And if you want to spend money, you can do advertising on Amazon too so that your book becomes a suggested read for people. Um, so that's a big positive of going with Amazon. Another question from Lily. Hi, Lily. How did you know you need to write the book? How did you know you needed to share this story? That's an amazing question. Um, a lot of times we have stories in our lives that we want to share, we're, we're excited to share, but I think you have to be ready. And I think you know you're ready when you have fully told yourself the story again and again and again, over and over again, that you're ready to share it with the world. Especially when it comes to nonfiction, I think it's really hard because we rush to share our stories sometimes when they're not ready. People will always tell me in my life, you can't write about something you're not over. So if you're go currently going through something, it's always best to wait a little bit of time before you share it with the world, whether in a blog post or in a book. So write it for yourself first. Before you show other people, before you think about publishing it, write it for yourself to see how far you get, to see how in love you get with it before you try to share it with anybody else. I think another thing is to remember that if an idea keeps coming to you again and again and again, use that as a sign, right? So if I keep thinking of the same story over and over again, to me that's a little bit of a sign that it needs to be told um, and that for some reason I'm meant to be the one who tells it. I really do believe that, that sometimes we are too nervous, too stuck in our ways to really think up think through some of the thoughts we have, but if we do have reoccurring thoughts about something or even reoccurring dreams about something, it's almost like the universe's way of telling us um, there needs to be something done with this and it's our calling. So if you have that kind of idea that keeps popping up, it could be that the universe is telling you to run with it. Do we have any other questions? Gonna scroll down to the post before. Will you um, do you see a demand or do focus groups? Just hope for it. So, do you see a demand for focus groups? Um, I I don't. You know, I think if you're the kind of person who's not quite sure about what you want to write about, you can do some research. A lot of times, find out what cool stories are happening in the news and maybe write a fictional post about that. Um, another thing you can do is look at the different trends of what's trending and write about topics like that. There's a lot of books coming out right now, of course, about um, stories about like the Me Too movement and things like that. Um, so what are some topics a lot of people are interested in and care about? If you're writing fiction, you can go toward that route of doing stories about topics that people really care about. Of course, if it's nonfiction, it's a little bit harder because it is your real life. What I would say with nonfiction is focus your life. You know, you as a person could have many books, so don't rush by making a nonfiction book filled with everything about your life. Instead, talk about just a couple of different themes of your life in a nonfiction book. Maybe it's a memoir about a certain chunk of your life, or maybe it's just short stories about a topic. Of course, books on dating, everyone thinks they have a book on dating inside of them, and I say more power to you. Dating is a very relatable topic. I could read dating books for days because they're funny, and the stories in them are things that are 
funny to read when you're, of course, not living them. So, um, you know, think about different themes if you're going to write nonfiction for topics of what you could write about. That's always a great potential thing that you can do. All right, we're going to wrap up this Facebook Live. I've been talking to you for about 20 minutes. Thank you for spending Tuesday night here with me. I hope you have the best day ever and you go out there and you do something fun. If you want to write a book, let me give you one short tip of exactly how to go about doing it. Write. Just write. Oh, I think we have one more comment that just came in before I hang up on you. Let me see if I could refresh and see it. I have a self-publishing question. Hi, Lila. Once your book is published, there are extra costs if you sell it in print and not ebook. For instance, you're selling it on Amazon to be shipped to buyers. So, yes. Um, basically, if you self-publish it and it's just an ebook, then there's not going to be that extra cost associated. But if you have it as a print book, Amazon's going to be the one. You go through Create Space, and Amazon's going to be the one who deals with printing and shipping. And of course, they'll take that out of the profit that you get. So you'll make a little bit less money on print books, but you can sell print books for more money than you do ebooks. So you can sell an ebook, let's say, for six dollars, and a print book for twelve dollars, and maybe it'll cost Amazon like two dollars to print it and ship it. So you make a little bit, a little bit less, but. It could be better to have that option. Some people still really like print books. I'm one of them. I don't read ebooks at all. So print, print versions are still very alive and well. And having that option on there could be just a great thing for people to do. Thank you for that comment, Lila. I'm sorry that I almost missed it. Comments are filtering in so slow on my dashboard. So if I miss any of your comments, if you, if you leave this Facebook Live with a lot of burning questions, feel free to write them in this thread, and I will write back to you throughout the evening. Again, if you're thinking about writing a book, take actionable steps. Don't think about it anymore. Every time you think about that you should write a book, pull out paper and a pen, go to your phone, and write. That's the simplest piece of advice I can give you is just write and just start right now. Hang up from this Facebook Live and write a sentence. That is literally all you have to do, and you're on the first step of writing a book. I wish you all so much luck. When your first book comes out, I'll be your biggest fan. I'll buy six copies. I promise you that. Thank you all again for watching. Remember, if you have questions, post them here. And thank you so much for being a part of this group. I can't even express to you how much it means to me. Every single time you show up here, you talk to people, you cheer people on, just makes life a lot easier and a lot less lonely to live. So thanks for making this community a home and a wonderful place. And I appreciate all of your love and support, as always. So Thank you. Have a great night. Go out there and live your lives and eat some delicious pizza. Sending you lots of love. Bye. Live your lives and eat some delicious pizza. Sending you lots of. <laughs> I don't know how to hang up. <laughs>